good time. Very kind. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Well, wow. This is great to be here. I'll tell you, it's exhilarating. And uh, I love Ohio. I just love Ohio. I love driving through these corn fields and bean fields and wheat fields and sheep and cattle and and did you say something about chicken and noodles? That's part of Ohio. <clears throat> We're honored to be here. And I bring you greetings from my dear wife. She's my very first girlfriend. And she's still my very best friend. And uh, we have been friends for a long, long time. We'll be married 59 years in August. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, I just want to bring her greetings to you tonight. She'd love to be here. Uh, we have, um, God's blessed us with six children. One is in heaven. 19 grandchildren, two of those are in heaven. Four great-grandchildren. And we're still counting. But uh, we're honored. And we want to say how proud we are of Tom and Nancy the hand of God on their life and what God has done in them is just an inspiration to me. Tom, I'm proud of you. And I'm proud of what God's doing in this region and what he's doing in your lives. You're beautiful people. You really are. And uh, I know that God has a future for you that transcends everything we can imagine, ask, or think. Since this is an open Bible conference, how many Bibles do we have here tonight? Amen. Hold them up. Don't, don't be afraid. Just hold them for a minute. Just hold them up there. Now, if you don't have a Bible, hold up your iPad or your iPod or <laughs> your iMac or whatever you got. <laughs> hold it up. Come on. Don't, don't, don't. That's fine. Hold it up. And if you don't have one, pretend by grabbing hold of somebody else's. <laughs> All right. Let's hold it up for a moment. Let's say it together, this is the Word of God. And I do believe that God will speak to me tonight. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. I love the Word of God. Uh, I started preaching uh, shortly, a few months after the Lord saved me as a teenager. And uh, I just started preaching, didn't know it was hard to do, so I just kept going. Nobody told me it was, so 65 years later, I'm still going at it. And uh, I'm so thankful for the word of the Lord that come to us. Now, let me just say this. God is getting you ready for that which he has already ready for you. Now, I'm not worried about this guy going to heaven. I believe he's going right on by. He's on fire. There's something happening in this house. Amen. And I, I like what I feel here. I like what I've seen in these young people and the Master's Commission and all these young people sitting up here. What a tremendous treasure. Yes. Trust me, the next great move of God is going to be among our children Praise and our God. youth. So Amen. Psalms 110, verse 3 says, Thy people shall be willing in the day of your power. I love the Amplified, especially when it agrees with my doctrine. And uh, it says, and thy young men shall spring forth to you as volunteers, as the dew of the morning. Just as sure as there's dew in the morning, God said, I'm going to bring revival. I'm going to touch your children. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon them. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Amen. Some of you boys and girls better get ready because that's what God's saying he's going to do. And you don't have to wait till you're an old person to let it happen. Amen. And I just want to assure you tonight that we are in an awesome moment. All right. God is getting you ready for that which he has all ready, ready for you. Now, your eye hasn't seen it, your ear hasn't heard it, 
neither has it entered in, into your heart the things, say things. things. Everybody wants things. Jesus said, if you'll put me first, I'll give you lots of things. The things which he's already prepared for us. And there's not a, a period there, but a comma. But he has revealed them to us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Hallelujah. Amen? For we've received not the Spirit of this world, but the Spirit of Christ, that we may freely know the things that God has already prepared for us. Amen? So, you know, you don't have to beg God to do some. He's got plenty on his schedule already. Amen. Don't worry about tomorrow. God's already there. <laughs> well, he is too. Amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and he's the end. Amen. Now, we're talking about climate change. This has been the theme of this conference is let it rain, Lord. We're looking for a lot of rain. It just so happened that I was born in a time when God was pouring out of His Spirit, and uh, I was born again in, in 1946, and God began to do an awesome work in our lives, revealing to us the restoration of the prophetic, the restoration of the fivefold ministry, the restoration of uh, a prophetic input, and then the song of the Lord was birthed in those days, Pastor Tom. And uh, we were, I was privileged to be there in the beginnings. And we watched the grace of God do some awesome things and how it changed so many people. And so I can talk about a lot of things tonight, but I'm talking tonight primarily about climate change. Now, Al Gore didn't invent it. And he didn't invent the internet either. But I think he's okay. But the point is, some of these things were, we, he re wanted credit for, I don't think he really, really deserved the credit for. But the point is that God is a God of awesome change. He's a God who brings change. And we're going to see him do awesome things in these days. And what, we, what I feel in my heart tonight, I want to just read you some Scripture. I want to give you a basic foundation of what I have to say, and I'm sure the noodles will wait. So, <laughs> oh, praise God. I love the music tonight. These guys are terrific. Amen. Wow. <laughs> Will you open your Bible, please, to the book of Acts? chapter 3, and I'm going to start there, and then we're going to go back into the Old Testament. But let's look at Acts chapter 3, and these are the words of Peter when he was talking that, that verse 18, thus has God fulfilled what he foretold by the mouth of all the prophets. Let me tell you this right now. If God has given you a word, you hang on to that word. God's word will never return to him void. When God sends forth His Word, it's like the rain. We're talking about rain. We're talking about climate change. He said, my Word is like the rain and like the snow. When it goes forth, it makes the earth spring forth. We'll get into that in just a moment. God's presence, God's glorious rain that He wants to pour on us is a fulfillment of His prophetic Word. Let me tell you this right now. The Lord God said he will not do anything unless he first reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. That is found in Amos chapter 3, verse 7. Now, the Lord God said, I want to I wanna do something, but I've got to tell somebody. And every new beginning in our life, in your life, there is a word. We need a word from God. We heard it read tonight. Elijah said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. When you're a prophet of God, you have to say what you hear in order to see what you say. 
And if you're a preacher of the Word, you have to you have to say what you hear in order to see the results of what God said He would bring to pass. And we can expect that to happen. Amen? Amen. And so tonight, uh, the Word of the Lord in book of Acts chapter 3, Peter is preaching, and he said, Thus has God fulfilled what He foretold by the mouth of the prophets, that, this, that His Christ, the Messiah, should undergo ill treatment and be afflicted and suffer. So here's what he said. So repent and change your mind. Turn around and return to God that your sins may be erased. Blotted out, wiped clean, that times of refreshing. I want you to hear that tonight. There are times of refreshing. There are seasons of refreshing. There are times when God will rise up and do awesome things. Sovereignly, He will come. There are times of refreshing, of recovering from the effects of heat, and of reviving with fresh air may come from the presence of the Lord. Now you can tell I'm reading from the Amplified text, but I want this to get into your spirit because God said there are times and seasons It's a marvelous thing to know the times and the seasons. The sons of Issachar knew the times and the seasons, and they knew what God's, what what they should do. In other words, they not only knew the time and season, but they know, they knew how to respond to those times. And I'm telling you tonight that we're standing on the cusp or the threshold of an awesome intervention of God, and God is saying to you, it's time. It's time. Here's what he said. Listen carefully. That times of refreshing may come, that he may send you the Christ, who was before designated and appointed for you, even Jesus. Notice carefully. Heaven must receive him and contain him until the time for the complete restoration of all that God spoke by the mouth of all his holy prophets from ages past. In other words, God said Jesus Christ cannot come back until all of that which was prophesied concerning him is fulfilled until we receive seasons of refreshing. Malachi chapter 3, verse 1, God said, Are you here? Malachi 3, 1, He said, The Lord whom you seek, I thought tonight, all of us reaching out for God, crying out for God. I hear it. I heard it in your spirit. I felt it all around me, reaching up for God. And the Lord God said, the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. He will suddenly come. Now listen to me carefully. I believe in the second coming of Jesus. I'm looking for Jesus to come back, but I'm going to tell you something. He is coming to his church before he comes for his church. Are you you hearing me? He said, the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come, and he's not coming for a one-night stand. He's not coming for just a little kiss and a hug. He is coming for habitation. He's not coming for visitation. Now, we've been talking about visiting. No, I want habitation. He said when he comes, he's coming and he's going to sit down. He's going to sit down among us. <coughs> that is a judicial word. That means he's going to take his position as a judicial king of kings and lord of lords. And that's his proper place. He will sit. <coughs> Excuse me. He will sit. I, you know, I got a little fire. If I got some water, we might have some steam. <laughs> Thank you. This, Cal, this Ohio weather is a little different. Anyhow, he said he's going to sit and refine 
the sons of Levi. That's all of us. Every one of you are kings and priests unto God. Yes. Amen. Now, that's not a cliche. That's not just a little, little thing that we do rhetorically. That is a positive statement from God. He has washed us in His own blood, and He's made us to be kings and priests unto our God. Amen. Revelation 1, 5, and 6. And then Peter tells us that in Second and 1 Peter 2 and 9, that we are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. I won't dwell on that, but I want to establish something. He's coming to us, and He's coming as a refining fire. Amen. And He's going to purify the sons of Levi, the priesthood of God. We are kings and priests unto God, and the Lord's coming among us, whether we're ready or not, and He's going to purge us. He's going to wash us and purge us and refine us so that we may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going somewhere tonight with the climate change, and I say this with all of my heart, that God wants to do something very special in this place. <clears throat> tonight. As we review our history, and I thank God for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit way back in 1906. Uh, a few years ago, we celebrated the 100th anniversary of Azusa Street, and I was there with a lot of my friends. It was a great moment. But let me tell you something. God has done many things since then, and uh, I know that Brother Seymour never realized how awesome and, and impacting that little stable that they rented would become. It's affected the whole world. The greatest movement in the earth today is the charismatic movement, the Spirit of God moving in many, many denominations, crossing over their old boundaries of forebodings and everything else. And in spite of them, God's filling them full of the Holy Ghost, and they're talking in tongues and prophesying and declaring the Word of God. I've traveled in now in 80 different countries, and I'm seeing God doing awesome things. 35,000 people today accepted Jesus in China. 250,000 people all over the world today accepted Jesus. Let me tell you, this thing's going all over the world, and there's no end. I, I've just been in a meeting recently, and they showed us on a graph, on a, on a real-time internet connection of thousands and thousands daily coming to Jesus Christ. In one day, 49,000 people wanted to know how to get saved. And, and in the same day, we have thousands of people downloading the Bible in Saudi Arabia, where you can't buy a Bible. But I'm going to tell you, the Word of God is going forth, and it's, and it's reaching out. Now, something's happening. The change, the climate is changing. <clears throat> Amen? Amen? Now, I saw the glory of God come in those early days. In 1948, there's 43 people up in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and they were praying and seeking God in a little assembly God Bible school. It was a Quonset hut. It was an old steel uh, barn, literally a, a, a hangar they used for the airplanes on, uh, during the war. And that little, that little hangar was turned into a Bible school. 43 students seeking God heard of revival. They heard of a guy named William Branham. Now, please understand, some of these guys didn't quite make it all the way to the end. But that doesn't diminish the fact that God used them mightily to reach hundreds of thousands of souls, and signs and wonders and miracles actually happened. I was there. I was in those meetings. I can tell you they happened. But what happened was there were hungry people who were crying for rain, Talk about rain, brother. You know, you know when, you, when you hear rain on a tin roof, <clears throat> how many know it's pretty loud and it's pretty, pretty, it's pretty, well, it's convincing, isn't it? And they were down there crying out to God, and they start crying out, God, give us latter rain. This is what you were saying, Tom, in all your advertisements. And the Lord's heard you. And whether you're ready or not, He's coming. And whether we're ready or not, He's coming. Whether, he, whether we like it or not, he's coming. He's coming suddenly. And these people have fasted and prayed and seeking God, and one day they were in that little Quonset hut, 
And they were all crying out to God. They'd been fasting and praying, saying, God, we want to see the supernatural. We want to see the miraculous. We want to see signs and wonders. We want to see your glory revealed. We want the earth to be covered with the knowledge of the glory of God, even as the waters cover the sea. And while they were praying, they heard this incredible deluge of rain. And some guy in there got thinking, oh my goodness, my windows are open in my car. So he decided to run out while they're praying. And the rain, I mean, they could hear it. Everybody could hear it. It was just a thunder clasp, it sounded like. But when he went outside, there wasn't a sign of a cloud. There was nothing in the sky. It was clear. There wasn't no water anywhere around there. What they were hearing was the rain of God. Are you ready for that? Amen. When you, put up your, your, when you put up your advertisements and you reach out to God and you've been crying out for God to give us rain, it's coming. I, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. And I want to tell you, we watch the revival. We watch great men like Dr. Price and William Branham and A. A. Allen and Jack Coe and many of these that don't, you guys don't even hardly know about. And, and, and history is full of them if you really want to search it out. And you'll find that there was a time, a season of refreshing that came from the presence of God. And I lived to see it. And I saw literally thousands of people jamming into buildings to get a touch from God. I saw ambulances lined up at the great stadiums and they're unloading people on gurneys and cots. And the, and the people would say, we won't need you. you can and drive on. We won't, we won't need an ambulance to go home. We're walking home. And many of those people were healed before the prophet ever got up to say a word because of the word of the Lord that was being taught them. And faith came to them. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. Amen. I'm not here to glorify any man. Listen to me. I'm talking about seasons. I'm talking about a climate change. And when God changes the climate, you can't hold it back. You can't stop this thing. Amen. I remember when that revival came, some of the agnostics got up and some of them were religious agnostics. They said, oh, this will all blow over. Well, it did. It blew all over the world. It did. It actually did. I've watched it. I've seen it now. The fruit of this great revival at that time. Listen, folks, when the revival came in that day, three and a half years in Detroit, Michigan, the revival broke out and it went seven days a week, 24 7. Are you ready for a revival? It's going to disrupt your schedule, I guarantee you. I saw the church packed, around 3,000 people in that church every day and night. And the fire marshals would come and lock the doors because there were so many people jammed in the place. And people were being filled with God, filled with the Holy Spirit. The prophetic word was powerful. The revelation of teaching. The teacher would get up to open the book and he had never seen what he was going to say. He had no idea what God was going to say through him. He was just as shocked as the people sitting in the congregation because it was spontaneous revelation. And then the song of the Lord that came, they called it the angelic choir. Now, we've heard some of that tonight, but I'm telling you, when, when, you, when, I, uh, when I heard thousands of people singing in the Spirit, singing in heavenly languages, harmonics like we've never heard, sounds that we've never heard. That's what provoked us in Finley to move into the realm of the Song of the Lord and Symposium. When God gave me that revelation, it blew me away because I had no idea how to get at this. But God showed me that we were to have a full symphony orchestra. And we had it. And, and, and that's history. It happened. You all know that it happened. And we couldn't do that. Only God could do that. But see, that's not the end of it. God said, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. 
and God's going to start here tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Yes. All right, get your umbrella down. Amen. I, I lived through the hippie movements. I saw thousands of young hippies getting saved. Tom was one of the hippies. And, and uh, I, I see several more out here. Some of you got your hair cut, but I see you. I know you're here. And uh, you can't fool me, I can tell you. But I'll tell you, I saw these hippies come into the Lord by the, by the droves. Amen. We live in California, in Southern California, and Chuck Smith baptized over 10,000 young people out there in the Pacific Ocean. And hundreds and hundreds of these young people are now preaching the gospel and have got great churches across the nation. Now, I'm saying this to tell you, when the Holy Ghost decides to visit someplace, he's not coming for a one-night stand. It's the habitation of God by the Spirit. He wants to move in. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. And I was there at the beginning of the charismatic renewal. I remember how God spoke to us in those days. My father was pastoring in South Bend, Indiana, and in the Hungarian Assembly of God. And my folks were from Hungary, and I speak Hungarian and traveled there and lived there for a number of years. Listen, when they called me, he says, Son, he said, you won't believe where we were last night. I said, where were you, Dad? He said, we, we were having a prayer meeting in the Gold Dome of Notre Dame University. Now, you all know, <laughs> if you know anything about Notre Dame, you know that's not a Pentecostal Bible school. <laughs> At least it wasn't until then. And so what happened? I said, how in the world? Did you rent the place? He said, no. We were invited by the nuns and priests to come and lay hands on them. They wanted to receive the Holy Ghost. And I said, you've got to be kidding. And the Lord said to me, he said, I'm, on, I'm getting ready to send them to you, but don't you check their labels. See, we, we Pentecostals were famous for cleaning our fish before we caught them. Ah, uh, some of you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and I'm really glad you don't. But let me tell you, it was, <laughs> it was real. But the Lord poured out of his spirit, and God began to pour in to us. And in that first year, as he poured out his spirit in the charismatic renewal, we baptized, multiplied hundreds of people. And among them, 35 pastors came in and received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and water baptism. Our baptistry was going on all the time. I had a pump on it and a filter just like a swimming pool. It was going all the time. We didn't stop. And, uh, and Brother Kelly came at midnight. This is a, a Methodist preacher. And he had been sneaking into my classes and, and, and I was teaching on baptism and I was teaching on water baptism and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the doctrine of baptisms. And he'd sneak in and take notes and he's very profusely taking notes. And uh, he went home one night and at 12.30 in the morning, way after midnight, I know it was after midnight, I get a phone call, he said, Moses. I said, who in the world's this at this hour? This is Kelly. I said, Kelly, what are, what's wrong? Are you sick? No. He said, I need to be baptized. He, he was the pastor of the Methodist church down the street and he had got into the Methodist church that evening where, um, in his church and they had a beautiful church and beautiful furniture and a, and a big font. You know what a font is? <laughs> beautiful font. It was all made out of walnut and it was really ornate. And uh, that's where they sprinkled you. And he, he says, I got so mad at that font. I said, what you do? He said, I ripped it out. <laughs> and I threw it in the backyard. And he's crying on the phone. He said, I need to be baptized. I said, when? And he said, now. <laughs> so my wife and I got out of bed, and, and, and Susie and him come running down the aisle, speaking in tongues, glorifying God. And he was a, he's quite an accomplished Methodist preacher. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we all got in the tub together, and we all were baptized. I, I got baptized over, and Betty got baptized over, and we got full of the Holy Ghost, and the next week they fired him. <laughs> so I said, that's okay. Come over and work with me. And he did. And so I'm just saying, 
I'm not here to wreck you tonight, but I want to help you to understand when revival comes, strange and wonderful things happen, yes. and things are out of the ordinary. Yes. Amen. And, and, <laughs> and you forget about the clock, like tonight. See, I don't have to leave here until Friday morning. So anyway, <laughs> we, I want you to know that God wants to change the climate in this house and in your house and in your church and in your community where you are. We're coming into a season of abundance of rain. Amen? There's a global, global changes that are going on right now. Folks, let me say this sincerely and seriously. We've never seen so much devastation as we have in the last few years. I'm talking about earthquakes. I'm talking about tsunamis. In fact, today there was an earthquake in Indonesia. I'll be in Indonesia in just a few weeks. I'm planning to be in Cambodia in about two weeks in Vietnam and Malaysia and then to Indonesia. But they had a massive 8.2 earthquake today just outside of, of Jakarta. I don't know the effects. I haven't heard the news today anymore, but uh, I, you don't have that kind of shaking without something shaking really bad. It's not good. There's a whole lot of shaking going on. There's tsunamis. There's earthquakes. There's devastation. Tornadoes like we've never had ever in our country this past year. And I'm not glorying in that, folks. I'm just telling you. This is climate change in the natural. But you just wait till you see it in the spiritual. God said, I'm going to shake everything that can be shaken. And he said, only those things that cannot be shaken will remain. So you better be on the rock. Amen? You better know that. The word climate's an interesting word. In Webster's Dictionary, the word climate, believe it or not, means to lean like a ladder. It's an incline. It means an incline like a ladder. I don't know why the, where we get that from, but that's what, it, that's what it translates to, the etymology of the word. It's like Jacob's ladder. I was in Duisburg, Germany just a few months ago, and in that great city, they have a huge shopping mall, and in, the, in that mall, when you go into the mall, you walk in and there's a humongous golden ladder. I'm talking about a ladder with, with huge aluminum rung, uh, sides to it, and there, it's about 10 feet uh, 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 across the ladder, and then it has rungs on it, okay? But it goes up over 210 feet. It goes right through the ceiling, the glass ceiling of that, of that great shopping center, and you, it looks like the contractors left the ladder hanging there after they finished building the building. It goes way up. I mean, it's huge. But the bottom of it is called Jacob's Ladder. Now, you all know if you know anything about Jacob's Ladder, this is what he saw as a gateway to heaven. And he saw angels ascending and descending on that ladder. Come on, folks. Now, Duisburg, Germany, why would they do that? I'll tell you why. A hundred years ago, they had a Pentecostal revival in that town. And somebody remembered it. And somebody was a relative to the architect who come up with the idea. You see, God's always left himself a witness. And these people are hungry for God. And God said, I'm going to respond. You call on me, and I will answer you. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 33. And folks, let me tell you something. This is no joke. God said, I'll talk to you. Can you imagine two billion professing Christians in the world, everybody screaming for God at one time, and God said, you're next. I got an email the other day from somebody, and they're explaining how they got through to heaven. And they said when they got through, there was a voice that said on the other end of the line, your call has been received, and but it will be answered in the order in which it was received. <laughs> Can you imagine that? When you're in trouble, folks, you can't wait for 11 million other people to be answered first. No, God said, you call me, I answer you. 
This email said, if you want to speak, and it's an automated voice that said, if you speak English, push one. If you want to talk to the Father, push one. If you want to push, talk to the Son, push two. If you want to talk to the Holy Ghost, push three. And if while you're waiting, you want David to sing you one of his psalms, push four. <laughs> and, instead, and then the voice comes on again and says, I actually got this email. And the voice comes on and says again, <laughs> if you're calling to find out whether one of your relatives have made it, please enter their social security number <laughs> and push pound. If you don't get an answer, try 666. <laughs> now, I didn't write that, but that's how people think. But I'm going to tell you, our God said, you call on me, I'm ready to answer you. And I'm ready to show you great and mighty things that you've never known. Are you saying amen? amen. All right. Now, this is what I want you to see. Leonard Ravenhill was a great writer on revival. And one of his books was called Why Revival Tarries. Some of you pastors probably have read that. In the opening of that book, in the preface of his book, he says these words, and I want to quote this tonight, before God, or sorry, before the church arises to shake the world, before the church arises to shake the world, some obscure truth of God arises to shake the church. God is bringing us revelation. I want you to open your Bible to the book of Hosea, and you'll find that in the Old Testament. All you Bible scholars know that, don't you? Okay, it's page 1461 if you have the right Bible. In Hosea chapter 2, I want you to hear these words. This is God speaking. Verse 21, and incidentally, if you study the prophecy of Hosea, you'll find out that he's talking about God's betrothal to his bride. He's talking there typically of the church and himself as the bride and bridegroom. And he talks about being restored. And he talks about restoring his bride. In verse 15, he said, I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to bring you back. No matter where you're scattered, I'm going to bring you back, and I'm going to turn the valley of Achor, which is the valley of trouble. I don't know if any of you people have ever had a visit there. Come on. The valley of Achor means the valley of trouble. And I'm going to open for you a door of hope in the valley of trouble. I will open to you a door of hope in the valley of trouble, in the valley of Achor. And then he goes on to say, I'm committed to you. Listen, it, listen, folks, if God has anything to do with you, he's got everything to do with you. And he's the initiator. You didn't choose him. He chose you. Amen. He's the chooser, and you're the choosee. And Jesus said, I, you didn't choose me. I chose you. I have a purpose for you. And don't try to somehow or another insult God's intelligence by telling him you can't do it. If God said you can do it, you can do it. God called you to do it. He will provide the power to perform what he's asked you to do. Amen? Amen? And here's what he said. In that day, God said, in that day I will respond. In what day? I'm talking about a climate change. I'm talking about when God turns our captivity. I'm talking about when God changes the climate around you. How quickly it can change. Amen. I was just out to the East Coast and it was 80 degrees. And yet yesterday when I was up in Detroit, uh, it, it got down to 30 degrees, or 30-something. It was, I mean, it was snowing. Actually, it was snowing. And then, you know, we're seeing such a shift, and we're seeing such dramatic changes in the climate. We've never had a winter like this on the east. 
You folks around here have never had a winter like this. Come on. What's God up to? He's up to something. Here's what he says. And the Lord said, I will respond, says the Lord. I, listen carefully now, I will respond to the heavens. The heavens which are asking for rain to pour on the earth. And the heavens shall respond to the earth which begs for the rain it needs. Now watch it. God said, I've set up this system. Heaven is calling for rain. Earth is calling for rain. Watch it. He said, I'm going to respond. I am going to answer. Heaven is calling for rain. And God said, I want you to call for rain. Watch it. Here's what he says. And the earth shall respond to what? To the grain and the wine and the oil. Now listen to me, precious hearts. We've come through a heavy season of teaching and preaching, and seed has been sown all over the place. Don't ever underestimate the power of seed that's already planted in your life. Uh, many years ago, over probably 40 years ago now, I was in King Tut's tomb in Egypt. It's changed a lot since then, but in those days, you could go right into the old tomb. And I went down to that old tomb, and I saw the artifacts, and the guide brought out a little box about the size of my Bible, a little wooden box, and in that box was about four compartments. And in those compartments were a variety of seeds. One of those compartments had wheat seed. And, it, they, and the other compartment had lotus seeds. And there was variety of seeds. And they told me that they took a handful of these seeds, 3,500-year-old seeds that were covered with some sticky-looking stuff like thick, thick coffee. It looked like, like gooey coffee. There's sticky stuff that was all over these seeds. They had covered these seeds with this stuff. And they took those seeds out of the box, and then they took them out and washed them and planted them in season. And those seeds began to grow and produce. I stood outside by huge lotus plants that come out of that box. Seed that had been in there for 35 years, 3,500 uh, 3, years. Now, the seed that's in you is eternal. You're born again out of natural seed. You, every one of you are supernaturally generated. Amen. You were born by the sperma of God. You have God's DNA in you. Now, what's going to make it produce? Rain. God said, you got the stuff. You got the seed. Your ground needs to be broken up. God will cause the fallow ground to be busted up. But he said, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to rain on you. And you're going to be shocked at what comes out of you. My grandson was bound by the devil for many years. Ever since a young lad, he was a surfer, went down to the beach, got in the crowd, and he was caught and into the web of drugs like I didn't know. I had no idea how deep it was. But a year ago, we came to a crisis, and he was with us. Listen to me. This young man, I, I, I had preached to him. I would prayed with him. I, when he was a young boy, Pastor Tom, I got down with him. I gave him his, uh, his first Bible. I asked him to pray the sinner's prayer. He prayed. He cried, accepted Jesus. But the devil put a noose around his neck and tried to kill him more than once. He tried. I didn't know this, but he tried three or four times to commit suicide. He was absolutely lost. His dad had spent multiplied thousands on rehab, sending him here and there, but they couldn't help that boy. But I'm going to tell you what. 
we got down a serious business a year ago at Christmas, and we faced this young lad and said, Son, this is the showdown time. You, we are not going to let the devil take you any more. We closed the gap there in that house, and mom and dad and all of us got together. Listen, children are the heritage of the Lord. Amen. Blessed is the man that has his quiver full of them. But that's not all. He says, when you get your arrows in hand, when you get your arrows in hand, then you go to the enemy at the gate, and you can do business with the devil when you've got your arrow in hand. Do you hear what I'm saying? Mom and dad, listen to me. You've got sons and daughters that are drifting out there. Don't you believe the devil's lie? They're not lost. There's a seed in them. Hallelujah. And the power of the Word of God will come alive. And tonight, I want to tell you, that boy was changed by the miraculous power of God. We, he, he went for one more spell, and they left him dead on the floor. He turned blue. His breath was gone, and his, his drug dealer fled the house because he was terrified. He, he knew he was dead. But Jesus came to him. And when he came to the bottom of all the pits that you could go to, that boy heard Jesus calling his name. He said, Grandpa, Jesus came to me. He spent a year at Teen Challenge, totally transformed, full of God, full of the Holy Ghost, praying for people, casting the devil out, healing the sick, and he's in India tonight preaching the gospel. Amen. Folks, I'm going to tell you, when he writes to me, I said, oh my God, where did he get this stuff from? My wife said, where do you think he got it from? <laughs> I never thought he heard anything, but it's just pouring out of it. He said, Grandpa, I'm not a recovering nothing. I am a brand new creature. I am a new creation in Jesus Christ. That's rain. Shukaramamanda. That's a prerequisite of Joel chapter 2. He said, I'm going to restore everything that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the locust has devoured. And some of you need to hear this. Not only stuff he's going to give you back, but he said, and the years. And the years. Some of you are sitting here tonight and you're, that devil's told you it's all over. You'll never get that opportunity back. Lost opportunities, lost deals. The devil's ripped you off. Business has ripped you off. And they, you think you're gone. No, no. God said, I'll, I'll, I'll restore. I, I've got years to give. Only God can give you years. No man could ever do that for you. People can give you money and houses and lands. But God said, I'll give you years. Hallelujah. That's what makes me keep going. Right. Amen. I'm 79 on the outside in, in a few days. But I'm 18 on the inside. Amen. Amen. Do you understand tonight what I'm talking about? It's season. It's time. God said, I'm going to bring rain. Now, here's what he said. Listen. Look at this again. And the earth shall respond to what? to the grain and the wine and the oil which beseech it, the, the stuff inside of you. Listen, there's something inside of you, whether you're awake or asleep, there's something inside of you that you didn't put there that is crying out to God. The whole earth is groaning and travailing and waiting for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. Yes. Oh, please, saints of God, if you're a Christian, please inform your face. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Amen! <laughs> you know what I'm doing? I, I love you guys. 
I'm telling you, there's a bunch of preachers up here. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, you too. They're <laughs> saying, yeah, you don't know me. I said, no, you don't think I do, huh? You want me to talk some more? Yeah. <laughs> don't worry, I won't embarrass you anymore. <laughs> God's going to do an awesome climate change. Here's what he said. The earth is calling out. The grain, the wine, and the oil are all beseeching it to bring them, them forth. Now, there's something in you that is ready to be birthed, ready to break out, ready to spring forth. And all we need is rain. We need the rain of God. And God said, you've got the climate, you've got the dirt, you've got the seed in you, you've got the stuff in you, the stuff of revival is all over this house. And God's going to take ordinary people. And pastor, you're moving into a whole new dimension of the prophetic God's going to release a river out of your belly. You've been trying too hard. You've been trying too hard. Just relax in God because there's something inside of you that's going to break out on the right hand and on the left, and you're going to see fruition. You're going to see a multiplication. You're going to see an exponential growth of God first in you and then in this house. It will happen, says the Lord, and even the rebellious, even the rebellious, even the rebellious are coming back home, and you're going to see them coming with great hunger and thirst. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Here's what God says. This, when I saw this, folks, it just blew me away. Because, you see, we've been asking God, do something, God. God said, just, just let me rain on you. Everything you, you need is already in you in seed form. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Amen. I go around watching for the fingerprints of Jesus on people's faces. Last few months, within the last few months, I baptized four of my neighbors in water. And God baptized them with the Holy Ghost. And there's several more on the edge. Hallelujah. Now, I, I believe in this. I, I walk down on my walk. When I walk, I don't walk, you can tell I don't walk quite as much as I should. But I love to walk, but I pray for my neighbors. And God's saving them one after the other. They're coming. They're coming. And out of that is coming ministry. Out of that is coming people with talents. Oh, my God, what kind of talents. A young lad across the street. Oh, I wish I could tell you all these stories, but it's too much. But let me just tell you this much. They're there. The people are there. I was driving in Ohio some time ago, and I was heading down south, and uh, I, I rented a car in Columbus, and I was going down to, down to Loudonville to speak at a men's retreat or something, some kind of big men's meeting. But anyway, you know, I felt a holy nudge from the Lord. He's saying, just turn in here and stop and get some Starbucks coffee. Now, let me tell you something. Let me explain to you something. Now, God knows me, and he knows you. And he knows that I'd switched a long time ago to McDonald's because I get a senior cup there, and, <laughs> and it's, it's only 67 cents. That's where I go for my coffee, generally, okay? Uh, you understand, nothing against Starbucks, but except the price. It's like five bucks for... <laughs> Okay, so anyhow, in my mind, that that's not my, would not have been my stop, okay? So I, I felt the Holy Spirit just nudging me like that. Just give me a little, little tap, pull in here. I said, okay, Lord. So I pulled in, and I was going to drive in to the parking lot and park and go in and get my mocha, okay? And, uh, and the Holy Spirit tapped me again, said, no, don't park here. Drive through the drive-thru. 
I said, okay. So I drove through the drive through put my order in, pulled up my five bucks, and I was going to pay for my mocha. When I got up to the next window, the gal was standing there, a lovely young lady, and uh, I, I, I was thinking mo about mocha, and I was thinking about my trip, and I wasn't, I wasn't premeditating. I wasn't in a mood, even in a mode, I thought, to prophesy. But all of a sudden, when I got up to that window, the Holy Ghost took over. And this gal's holding my mocha. I got five bucks to give her. And all of a sudden, I said to her, when was it that you accepted Jesus as your Savior? And her jaw dropped, and mine did too, because I was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked, and she was. And then before I could get away, the Holy Ghost spoke through me again and said, and how long are you going to wait to fulfill your missionary call? And now she's weeping, and I'm getting a mocha shake. <laughs> you hear me? God had her number. That's how much God cares about you. Yes. He stopped some old preacher, turn him in there, make him drink Starbucks just to get <laughs> you to go to the mission field. Come on. Yeah. I love this. And the earth shall respond. To those that are restored in Israel who pray for a supply of them. In other words, God said, I'm ready to answer your prayer. You've got the seed in you. The earth is crying out for deliverance. The earth wants to produce. Heaven wants to produce. Come on. It's time. It's time for the latter rain. Here's what he says. Let's go over to Je Hosea chapter 6. And you know, there's no divisions in the original. You know that. Chapters and verses were all added. This is one letter. But in the previous verse, God said, I'm going to my place. I'm going to my place, and I'm going to stay there till you get ready for me. And when you get ready, I'll be there. You see? Some of you are, 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 are not knowing how to handle this. You mean God hides himself? Yeah, he's playing hide and seek. He said, I'll hide, you seek. Come on. Seek you the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. And God said, I'll go to my place, and then you're going to get ready for me. And when you get ready, I'll come. But then he can't wait. He's like us. He gets impetuous. He says, come on. Read it. Next verse. Chapter 6, verse 1. Come, let us return. That's the golden word of grace. Hallelujah. Come, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Come, all ye that are thirsty. Come, if you're hungry. And here's what he said. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us so that he may heal us. God didn't try to kill you. He tried to stop you. Amen. He had to break your leg to keep you from running away. But he didn't do it to kill you. He done it to heal you. I'm reading the Bible to you. He has torn us so that he may heal us. He has stricken us so that he may bind us up. Hallelujah. What an awesome God. What an awesome God. And then he said, after two days, he will revive us. He will quicken us, give us life. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live before him. Now watch this. Yes, let us know. Yes, let us recognize, be acquainted with, and understand him. Let us be zealous to know the Lord to appreciate, to give heed to him, and to cherish him. Why? Because his going forth is prepared and is certain as the dawn. And he will come to us 
as the early rain and as the latter rain in the same month. He's coming with a deluge. Let me tell you something about this latter rain that you're crying out for. I see it tonight. I hope you understand. We're asking God to give us rain. Zechariah 10.1, he said, ask me rain in the time of latter rain. There's a season, and we're there tonight, folks. I hear it in my spirit. I feel it in my soul. I encourage you not to give up, but press on in, and let's pray for a gull washer. Let's pray for a deluge. Amen. And it can happen before we get away tomorrow night or whenever you're going. I don't know. That's when I'm going, I think. Anyway, <laughs> early rain. Watch this. There are two rains here. Very important. The first is more. And that word more, M-O-R-E-H, in the Hebrew means a teaching rain. It's the rain that brings the seed to germination. It's the first rain that's, that causes the seed to germinate, to sprout, to start sending up a blade, and then a stalk, and then the corn, and then the harvest. You see, this is God's pattern. He said, you break up the fallow ground, and you're going to see it. Now, let me say this, folks. This is a teaching rain. If you don't know, you need a teacher. If you know and don't do you need a prophet. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then he talks about the latter rain. This word is malquash or geshem, a confirming rain that sets the fruit. Now, normally, these two rains were three months apart. The first rain was germination. And then the fruit would start to grow and sprout and develop and mature. But then just before harvest, God would send a deluge again to set the fruit in that grain. And that latter rain was what climaxed the harvest time. After that rain, God said, now you can take the harvest because this, your fruit is ready. It's ripe. It's full. It's harvest time. Oh, glory to God. Are you getting something out of this? And here's what he says. This is going to be germination, maturation, and fruition. And then it's going to be an acceleration. Amos 9 and 11, Pastor Tom quoted that tonight. He said in the last days he'd restore David's tabernacle. And here's what he said. The plowman is going to overtake the reaper. Now, how many of you folks are farmers here? All four of you, huh? What's the, what the world the rest of you do with all this farm country around here? Amen. Now, you understand, this is serious business. Now, <laughs> I'm not scolding you. I'm just shocked. He said, I'm going to send an acceleration where the plowman is going to overtake the reaper. What does that mean? It's going to be such a proliferation of harvest that you'll barely get the harvest off and the plowman's running after the, the combine and saying, get out of my way. I'm ready to plant some more seed. You hear what I'm saying? It's going to be so perpetuating. It's going to be so spontaneous. This is what revival is. And you can't start one of these. but you can get ready for it. And what I'm telling you tonight is this, that the seed is already in you. The seed in you is crying out to heaven tonight. The seed in you is calling on God. Whether you want to pray or not, the seed in you is crying out. Do you know that in springtime, seeds wiggle? Do you know in springtime when the climate changes, I'm telling you, my grandmother taught me. And she would say, honey, watch these seeds. And they were moving. They're anxious. They're wanting to get in the ground. They, it's springtime. It's time to plant. And they're crying out for somebody to shove them in the ground because they're out of place. They need to be planted. 
And God's doing something in our hearts tonight. There's a stirring. There's a stirring going on. Something going on inside of you. You feel it wiggling. You're saying, my God, something's got to happen here. Amen. You know the times and the seasons. And when seasons change, we're going to see harvest. We're going to see revival. We're going to see multitudes. Listen to me now. We're going to see. When you put that number up there, 111 million people in your Eastern Division, do you know George Barna says <clears throat> there's 85 million unchurched people in America? Now listen, this is, this is serious. 85 million unchurched people in America. But 85% of that 85 million, which is 67 million, are de-churched people. They've been there, done that, but they're not plugged in now. They're not going anywhere. Come on, you know your streets full of them and your communities full of them. And they're in your schools and they're in your factories. They're where you'll find them. They, they, you can see the fingerprints of God on them. They've been there. They've done that, but they're disappointed. They're disconnected. But God said, I'm going to bring them back home. Hallelujah. The biggest revival we ever seen is going to be AWOLs coming home. Now, if you don't know what that is, you haven't lived long enough. <laughs> Amen. James chapter 5 says, The husbandman has long patience, and he waits for the precious fruit of the earth until it receives the early rain and the latter rain. God has a season to visit us, and he's going to come in power and in great glory. Amen? Amen? We need rain. We need to ask God. You, O God, did send a plentiful rain, David said in Psalm 68 and 9. You did restore and confirm your heritage when it languished and was weary. Come on, church. How many know the church needs some rain? Amen. Languishing, weary believers that have grown discouraged and unplugged and they're not there. I'm not critical. I'm just observing. I'm analytical. I'm telling you that the whole earth is groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Are you going to be part of that? Are you going to be part of that restoration? Amen. You better get ready because let me tell you something. When revival comes like God wants it to come, you're not going to have very much leisure. You might as well forget about your schedule. Amen? And you better pray that you got enough in the, in the pantry because you maybe not work for several days. You may just lay in the presence of God and soak in His presence. It's not all bad. Hallelujah. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us but he will heal us. He's coming. In that day, says the Lord, I will respond. Come on. Amen. What else do we need? Call on me in the time of rain, and I'm going to give you rain. And it's going to rain. It's going to rain. And it's going to come forth. And then the earth shall respond to the sound of the corn and wine and oil saying, get me out of here. See, I'm a revival looking for a place to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And, and let me tell you, when God gets done pouring on us, we're going to do exploits. We're going to do things that people thought we could never do. We thought we could never do. But God said, I'm going to pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons, your daughters, are going to prophesy. Oh, you say, not my boy. Oh, yes, your boy. Because he said, I'm going to give my gifts to the rebellious also. <laughs> how, do, how do you like that? Amen. You didn't hear me, did you? Yeah. Now, you don't know my boy. Well, God does. God knew my grandson. I'm going to tell you, I weep every day almost when I read Caleb's messages, and he's sending me them. He's saying, now, come on, Grandpa, send me stuff. That I can preach. I want to preach. So I'm sending him stuff to preach. 
And, but he's in the Word. He's in the book, and the book's in him. And I'm shocked at what's coming out of this young lad that I never dreamed was in there. Nor do you know what's in the heart of your sons and your daughters. Don't give up on them. Let's believe God to bring our sons and our daughters into the very glory of God. Children will respond. Sons and daughters will prophesy. The rain is going to bring restoration of all that's been devoured. I was in Lima, Peru recently and uh, had awesome meetings there. I traveled quite a bit in Peru, all the way up to Michipucho, and it's, it's a big thing up in the mountains. And, you know, that church we were with several years back was just a small little group of people. They didn't even have a roof on the building. They had a, an old parachute hanging over, their, over the church to keep the sun off of them, but there was no roof because you know why? It never rains in Lima, Peru. It has not rained there in 100 years. I couldn't believe that. They told me that said, and until I flew over the city and I saw scores of houses without roofs on them. You look right down in their bedroom. That's right. You, when you're flying over, you can just look right down in the bedroom. You can see their beds laying there and because it don't rain. There's no moisture. It's dry. They're high desert, but they have a river. That river gives them life. That river flows with power and ferocity. It's just, it's a great river. Now, I'm not here to give you lessons in geography, but there's no rain there. However, whether you know it or not, right off of that coast, out from Lima, Peru, in the Pacific Ocean, is the birthplace of El Nino. El Nino, El Nino, El Nino. That's what controls our climate here in America and in Europe and around the world. It's over there. Isn't God awesome? Now, you figure that out. It blew me away. It rains in the mountains, but not in Lima. And right off the coast is El Nino. And if that temperature changes one degree, it messes up everything over here. It'll bring a drought in Kansas. I'm not trying to impress you with my meteorological skills, but I want you to know, I want you to know there's something to this. And I'm hearing God saying, I'm responding to the cry of the earth. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Hallelujah. And we're going to see his kingdom come. Now here's what Jesus said. I will build my church, but you go and build my kingdom. You see, you have to be born again to see the kingdom, and you have to be born again to enter the kingdom. I'm not trying to confuse you doctrinally. Please don't misunderstand me. I believe in the church. I believe that Jesus Christ is building his church. But I believe God has given us the go into all the world. Now, we heard pastors say that tonight. Do you know that two-thirds of the word God is go? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Wow. A little song we sing. Come on, guys. It's beginning to rain, rain, rain. Hear the voice of the Father saying, Whosoever will come drink of the water, I'm going to pour my spirit out on your sons and your daughters. If you're thirsty and dry, look up to the sky. It's beginning to rain. It's beginning to rain, rain, rain. Hear the voice of the Father 
saying, Whosoever will come drink of the water, I'm going to pour out my your daughter. If you're thirsty and dry, look up to the sky. It's beginning to rain. All right. Now listen, folks. I can't leave you without giving you an opportunity to get a good soak in. Yeah, now thank you, boys, for raising that up. All right? Now watch. Here's what we're going to do. I want you to stand up on your feet. And all you young kids, <clears throat> come on up here on the platform. Get around me on both sides. Come on right now. And all of you on this side, come on up here as many as you can. And the rest of you folks come in behind them. <clears throat> We're going to stand here tonight. And I ask the Lord, I ask the Lord to pour out on you. I ask the Lord to give you a gully washer. Hallelujah. Some of you need a good soaking tonight. Amen. You're thirsty and dry. Come on. What are you standing there for? I said, come on. Amen. Come on. I'm not tricking you. I want you to get a good old soaking on your sons and your daughters. If you thirst, it's beginning to rain. Oh, that's better. Come on. It's beginning to rain. Are you guys ready? Get your hands on the pocket. Say, I'm here, Lord. Pour out of the swat. Amen. Promise to pour. Come on, guys and girls, get closer here. What I want you to do tonight, I want you to be a, 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 a conduit. I want God to pour out of you into somebody else, okay? I want you to put your hand on somebody's shoulder. And, and, and don't be offended, please. We're not here to embarrass you, but we need rain. We need rain, okay? We're asking for rain. Now get ready because God's going to pour out and He's going to quicken the seed that's in you. He's going to quicken the gift that's in you. Some of you, listen, 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 listen to me. Listen, some of you are so dry, it is pitiful. And I'm only telling you because I love you too much to leave you the way you are. And so tonight, I want you to honestly say in your heart, God, give me some and let me pour it into somebody else, okay? 
You're going to be blessed, and somebody else is going to be blessed. We're going to pour into one another from vessel to vessel tonight. Now, listen, we're Pentecostal, I believe. I think I heard some sounds around here. Now, you already give it away, so don't try to hide it. You know it's there. I want you to begin to pray in the, in the Holy Ghost. If you have not received the baptism, this is the moment. Amen? Is that right, Randy? All right, you help us back there. And we want you to receive the Holy Ghost. Receive Him. Open your heart. Say, Lord, you are the right. Now listen. Listen to me. You've got to get this, folks. You've got to get this. He said, He. Say, He. he. Who's that? Jesus. Jesus will come to us as the rain. He will come to us. Jesus is the latter rain. He said, come on. If you're thirsty and dry, I'll give you a drink and you'll never be thirsty anymore. If you take of the water I give you, it'll be inside of you a river. Come on, church. I'm not talking about a, a little drop here or there. I'm not talking about mercy drops. I'm talking about a gully washer. Hallelujah. Come on, Jesus. Rain on me, Lord. All right? Let's pray for one another. Lord, rain on my sister. Rain on my brother. Rain on them, Lord, tonight.
up to the sky It's beginning to Hallelujah Glory to God Man Something happened to you tonight, didn't it? <laughs> Father, fill them all Just fill them up, Lord Saturate them Hot cup of water Shut Oh, yeah I'm hot for shame to just uh, he wants to saturate you amen you can't get in a hurry with God you see God has a way of working stuff out of you that needs to be worked out so he can get more into you amen so he said if you're empty and dry see you got to be empty before he can fill you yep. you've got a lot of self in there and a lot of excuses and all of that just let him wash it all away Hallelujah. glory to God when the Holy Ghost comes, He washes that stuff out of us and gives us a real hunger and a thirst. Now tonight, when you're laying on your bed, don't turn off the stream, okay? He, he loves to hear you talk in tongues. That's His prerogative. Amen. And that's the language the Lord gives you to communicate with Him. The devil don't understand it. See? People say to us, oh man, why speak in tongues? Nobody understands. Listen, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to God. You have no business listening to me if you don't want to. You Listen, I'm talking to God. He understands me. Amen? That's my heavenly language. And you know I'm telling you the truth. So don't let the devil rob you. Let me say this. I hope, listen, let's turn the music off for a moment. I want you to, brother, I want you to turn it off. Yeah, thank you. I want you to hear this. You may not know this, but scientifically, science now has proven they've done it on television. It's on your internet. You can go back and find, just do, do, do Google or Google, Google or whatever you do do. <laughs> and you can find out scientists have taken a scientific test and found that when you pray in tongues, there are certain chemicals that are released in the center of your brain that are dopamines, endorphins, serotonins, okay? These are all chemicals that God put in you to build, listen, to build your immune system. Wow. That's why Jude 24 says, you pray in the Holy Ghost and build yourself up. See, you are building your immune system. You don't need all that high-powered stuff. And the devil, listen to me carefully, the devil has come in and attacked our children to keep them from getting the Holy Ghost. And preachers have preached for them not to receive the Holy Ghost. Unfortunately, and what happens, thousands of young children, young kids are going to drugs and dope to get the charge that Come on. God intended to have freely. I've never lacked for a high. I've never lacked for a charge. I've never lived a day that I can remember that I haven't prayed in tongues. I build myself up every day. And I'm, I'm on no medication, I'm almost 80, and I'm going like 16, hallelujah, I'm no 18, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Now, please understand, I'm not critical of you, I'm not here to make myself anybody, but I'm just telling you that's what Jesus did for me, and he'll do it for you, and you can count on it, amen? amen. The Holy Ghost will edify you. Listen, those areas of your brain 
cannot be touched by anything else. They had four guys, three or four guys, stand up and they put a, 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 a MRI, what do they call them, these electronic gauges on their brain to, to uh, register. And they had a Buddhist guy doing his Buddha thing. And they had a Muslim guy doing his Muslim thing. And then they had a, a liturgical dry as a last year's bird's nest guy <laughs> saying his prayer. And none of these guys, listen, that, their brain just stayed dark. But when they, caught, they had a young guy like this guy here get up full of the Holy Ghost, he starts speaking in tongues and the whole, can, the whole screen lit up. The, his brain lit up on the screen. And they, they couldn't figure this out, folks. Let me tell you, something's going on here. They measured one tiny drop of that serotonin that you have, or that dopamine that you have in your brain, one tiny drop is 100 times more powerful than morphine. Now, what do you want? You want to go down to the junkie, or you want to get full of the Holy Ghost? Holy Ghost. Come on. Holy Ghost. Me too. John, that's free. That was just free. That's free. Let's go get some noodles. Hallelujah. 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 Let me give let's you a quick... Uh, a let's give Moses a hand. Yes. Let's give Jesus a hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let, me give you a, let me give you a little bit of direction real quick, okay? I want you, here's three, there's a couple ways you can get to the gym. You can go outside and go across the corridor into the gym doors, or you can go all the way around and follow the signs. Go find you a seat. We'll dismiss you from there, okay? Let's do it quick. Hallelujah. Hey, Josh. God bless you. <laughs>